Well, my dear artists, thank you so much for joining me. So what do you think about this beauty? I think this is going to be an exciting class. Take a look at these wonderful transitions of colors, this beautiful floral semi-transparent ornament. And I think actually that uh, this uh, transparency is what creates a real magic. So let's dive into this magic. Now, you can substitute it with a lot of different materials, but let me show you what I'm working with. So I chose Arches uh, watercolor, uh, that's the size, 100% uh, cotton and 300 gram. That's my favorite watercolor paper. Now I'm going to use watercolors, Sennelier, because I love them. And um, you could substitute it with many other things. I will talk about this later and also um, I'm showing you here an ink of uh, Newton and Windsor. It's a golden ink that I want to try and mix with watercolors. And I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to work with uh, two sizes of brushes, a thin one and a bit thicker one. And um, just as in any uh, thing, experience is important and uh, in order to get the experience you need some practice so let's have um, a very basic practice and uh, then you will be totally ready for this project so as i mentioned before the transparency that's what creates a magic so let's create two semi-transparent petals overlapping right so that we really see the transparency so uh, because i chose um holidays christmasy theme i am uh, painting like an abstract floral um, yeah an abstract floral uh, pattern although i have in my mind that it is what do you call this flower um poinsettia right poinsettia the red uh, the red in the middle and leaves are green so the christmas plant okay so my petal is ready and now it's already dry i talked too much i didn't even explain what i was doing so i dissolved the uh, red tones and then added a bit of purple and a bit of yellow and let it dry now I'm going to uh, create different petal with more um, like a colder, colder tones. And um, as you see, I'm diluting, um, diluting the colors with a lot of water. That's what really gives me transparency. And I'm creating similar shape of petal that is um, overlapping with the first one. Okay, so here is the deal. For this project, in my opinion, watercolors work the best, but you don't need to stick to watercolor paints. You could use any water-based colors and work with them exactly the same way as I do. If you use acrylic, also make sure that you really dilute it with water, a lot of water, right? You could use similar tones, or you could use completely different tones or even different plants. It's up to you. I'm giving you all creative freedom. Or you could repeat my exact steps. Now, when I'm adding other colors, okay, you see how I'm also making sure that this colors, like the blue in this case, is nicely diluted with water okay because water really helps for colors to travel now I'm adding some purple and then probably I'm going to try the golden ink so I mentioned acrylic but it could be any type of inks well right now I'm showing you my golden ink but you could use solid colors in, I mean just the regular colors inks um, it could be gouache. Well, with gouache it might be tricky because, because gouache is not that transparent. Make sure you use a lot of color, a lot of water. And uh, yeah, I think uh, tempera will work as well. Um, any water-based colors. So obviously oil colors are not going to 
work okay so when I add my ink I don't know what it's going to look like I'm just adding just a little bit you know some dots right making sure that I'm not really covering the, the area of the edge of the red previous petal so let's dry and see what happens I think this is really sweet you could really see the overlapping area this is really nice and um, yeah with a very simple treatment we actually achieve really beautiful results so technically this is all you need to know for this project simple right let's take a look again at the transparency so as you can see exactly where um, well some some colors are more opaque some are more transparent well, but it is what it is, and uh, I'm very excited to start this project. So let's take a look again at model painting. So we have two parts. One is the, uh, the word, letters, and an ornament itself. So I suggest to mark the areas for the ornament and areas for uh, the word. Oops, I'm not very straight. Well, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so I hope you are ready for the magic because it's going to happen right now. So I'm showing you these two main flowers of poinsettia. I hope I pronounce it correctly. And they are going to be our focal point. Focal point is the main point that attracts um, attracts attention okay and uh, they're obviously red so let's start off with red tone that is nicely diluted with water okay so I think I should stop talking uh, you just uh, repeat after me okay and then I'll give you some more details about it Oh, well it's so difficult to be silent there's so many things I want to tell you I promise I'm not gonna speak that much uh, towards the end of this class hopefully but I still need to explain what it's all about right okay so very important you can cross the border that you've created I'm just kidding yes of course you can but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you use just a little bit of colorful tone. It has to be really, really light and it has to contain a lot of water. Here is why. When you have water, color freely travels on the surface. So, paint only five petals. We will add more. And now, you see, because it's wet, I'm touching lightly with purple color that is also diluted with water and then the color travels okay nice well maybe you still don't see that it is nice but it is nice I'll tell you why because especially watercolors okay um, they have their own character okay you just need to touch the surface with uh, desired tone and then that's it you leave it as is the colors do the job by themselves they create these gradients they travel and then they dry the truth is you cannot really control it okay you just trust the paints okay it just happens by itself you see the purple that we applied earlier it's already really nicely dissolved with this red tones it's beautiful and it's not the end it's still traveling and of course it's going to look completely different once everything is dry so I like it so much I've decided even to make it more dramatic so just let colors do the job don't uh, don't try to control it okay so I'm happy with my first flower as you can see I also added some green and some yellow and I'm very curious what's gonna happen now exactly using same manner I'm starting off with red um, 
very nicely diluted with water, um, red ton, and doing exactly the same thing, okay? Well, it's beautiful and super cool. I'm very curious to see what it's going to look like when it's dry. Of course, this is not completed. My flowers need another touch. I'm going to apply more petals and I will make sure that they are uh, semi-transparent because transparency creates the magic. And now I am uh, painting leaves. These leaves are very, very simple in their shape, so I wanted to create something very, very basic using similar colors. You can add some green, you can add some red or purple, whatever looks good to you, but make sure that you don't overcomplicate things, okay? Simple is the key. I want to give you another cool tip the tip is to connect wet parts. For example, right now, as you saw, I've created a bridge, which is a branch, a bridge that goes from the petal straight through the branch straight to the new leaf, okay? What happens then, the colors are traveling and they mix and they create a beautiful integrity, okay? So give it a try and remember, Keep your elements pale. Well, I just said pale, but watch me adding such an intense color. Well, it is important to remember that when watercolors or any water-based colors dry, okay, they are being absorbed by uh, watercolor paper and the tone becomes more pale by itself. But if you apply too much tone and it's still wet, you can absorb it with uh, toilet paper or a paper towel. Now, take a look at my first uh, flower. See how pale this became? So yeah, that's what I meant. As you probably noticed, I uh, create something that is reminding a leaf of a holy berry because it's associated with uh, Christmas and holiday season well this is just my suggestion you could use any other uh, shapes if you like and of course this technique could be applied you know to any type of plants or flowers it doesn't have to be Christmassy but now, because I'm recording it in December, of course, I'm sticking to the holiday theme. Wow, I just applied so much purple. I'm going to absorb it with uh, toilet paper. And here is another uh, tip for you. If you have uh, an intense color somewhere, you could uh, dip your brush in it and spread it to other areas, to your other elements. Okay, I see that one of my flowers is totally dry and I am ready to create a transparent, well, semi-transparent magic and I'm adding um, petals on the top. Just remember to keep it very pale, nicely diluted with water and because originally these flowers are red, so make sure that red is your main tone. But of course we are going to add uh, to these petals some other tones. 
because, and here is another tip for you, more colors we mix together, more interesting the result is. I just love this transparency and just like we added purple first time uh, to the bottom layer let's do it again to the upper one Okay, now let me introduce to you another product because after all it's a mixed media class and I'm an owner of mixed media school, okay? Mixed media is when you mix things together. So um, the medium is um, uh, Golden Ink by Windsor and... Um, Windsor and... forgot the second name. Windsor and... Newton, right. Okay, so what I do, I just uh, mix the ink a little with uh, water and I'm just adding it just like any other color now it's going to work only if the surface is wet enough because we want this golden pigment to spread everywhere it could and that's about it right let the colors let the pigments do the job okay now very important to remember if you don't have this particular product it's all good any golden acrylic uh, I mean metal acrylic it could it doesn't have to be golden it could be silver it could be bronze it could be any other metal color so um, they exist uh, as dry pigments as acrylics uh, watercolors tempera technically uh, even gouache okay so just uh, see what you've got no need really to go and spend uh, your money because it's a holiday season I know you have a lot of spending right so uh, don't worry just find what you have on hand if you don't have it no worries it's I'm, I'm, I'm promising you still your work is going to look very impressive okay but okay so this is something I wanted to tell you and I forgot so when um, metal pigments whatever you use gouache or acrylics or dry pigment or as me uh, golden ink when everything dries the pigment gets up okay because its flakes are somehow lighter or something like this but they become more visible okay well not that they go up it's because the uh, tone uh, the colorful tone is sinking and being absorbed by the watercolor paper so all these golden flakes or metal flakes are on the top and um, technically what I'm trying to say is that don't use too much okay use just a little bit it's going to be visible even if it's not visible when you mix it with the wet um, colorful tones okay so just a little bit you can always add more right but no worries if uh, if it doesn't look exactly the way you want it to look okay it's gonna look good when it's dry Ooh, that's been a long speech So I'm finishing up a second flower uh, using exactly the same technique as uh, for the first one.
adding golden pigments uh, to the colors is and mixing them together is a such a such a beautiful and meditative activity and uh, my aim is actually get you into this meditative mood when you do this uh, project because when you feel it when you are meditative you uh, being connected to your creative soul and this is the best uh, mood the best mindset to achieve most effective most beautiful results being connected to yourself is the key thing so any creative activity well not any but I mean <laughs> some of some of the creative activity really helps you to be connected to yourself and um, it works both ways right so and if you for example start when you don't feel even you feel unsettled when you feel uh, sometimes stressed out this activity can bring you to this very nice and peaceful uh, mood right it's just amazing that uh, it is absolutely therapeutic activity that's why that's another reason to deal with this a reason to find time for this okay so as you see little little by little I'm filling up the space that uh, I drew this rectangle by adding leaves here and there I'm trying to make it not uh, too busy although as you see it's getting busy it's going to be busy anyway but it's a different type of busy it's tastefully busy okay but what I really suggest is at this point try to fill up gradually all the empty spaces okay but try at the same time not to make it too too busy because if you remember we are going to apply more layers more transparent layers and then it will look complete and then it will also has the magic My other suggestion is this, actually two suggestions. Number one, don't mix too many colors. I just introduced a bluish one and that would be it. So I have technically all kind of colors, okay? But I want uh, the flowers to be more red and the leaves to be more green. Although they could be purple and they could be pink and red and uh, all other tones that I'm already using in this work. So try not to mix too many colors, otherwise it's going to lose its integrity, okay? And the suggestion number two is don't mix too many shapes, okay? As you can see, I have only two uh, shapes of leaves and no more and because if I'm going to add more shapes it's going to look way too busy and not tastefully busy anymore so we have to kind of find this balance between colors and shapes and um, mm, elements and uh, dynamics it is it comes with uh, experience right but i'm sure that this uh, exercise will really help you to feel it and even if this attempt is not going to be perfect for you don't worry at least you got the tools you got the necessary uh, methods and then you can always improve it using maybe different designs but uh, technically the aim of this exercise one of the aims is to help you to understand and to achieve the balance between shapes and colors okay and as you see i'm adding another element and i'm not gonna add more elements so these kind of like red berries that i think remind holy berries that are associated with the holiday season again simplicity is the key you see each shape that i'm adding is actually uh, very very uh, basic When I was working on model painting, I uh, when I explored this particular technique, and I wanted to find the best way to um, deliver it to you, you know, with the very simple, very easy to understand instructions, right? 
So um, I showed it to my friends and uh, to my family and they were like, wow, I will, what a beauty. This is so great. We love it. It's absolutely stunning, uh, um, you know, painting. But um, when we don't know how it was created, we think, oh, wow, this is probably so difficult, so complex. Oh, I don't have the skills for this. But it's not about the skills. Everyone can do it. The key is to create very simple shapes. Let them dry and then to apply new basic shapes on top. It works really well when it's transparent. I talked about this already many times, but I strongly believe that this exact thing, the transparency, that what adds uh, a beauty and that what makes it look very complex, like um, an artist with a lot of years of experience painted it, right? But I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone can achieve really, really fantastic, beautiful results, okay? And as you see, some elements are um, are just gold, which is totally fine because it works well with our design. And also by this time you can see that our flowers dried and uh, the golden now looks more prominent, it's more visible. Uh, at the end of this class I'm going to play with the lights, I'm going to see it in different angles and you will um, see better what I mean. So another suggestion is that even I mentioned that it is a tastefully busy piece, okay? If you have blank spots, blank areas, it doesn't mean that they all have to be filled up with elements. Just add a little bit, okay, here and there, but also try to leave some space to breathe. I think I'm already overdoing it, but um, yeah, it's almost there. I'm almost done. I, uh, I think I need to stop. Okay, this is it, this is it, this is done. I need to stop, I need to stop, I need to stop. <laughs> it's so addicting, it's really difficult to stop, but okay, you see, I just stopped. Okay, so here comes another uh, touch. It's optional, if your work is too busy, don't do this. If you wanna try it, please try it. It's better to try it and to regret about it or uh, not to try at all. Experience, even if it's not a desired experience, it's still preferable. That's what I think. So as you see, I have um, my brush full of golden uh, ink and now I'm just kind of lightly, um, what do you call it, uh, tapping on it and then I get this little nice tiny blobs. And now let's create writing. Wow, well, we're progressing quite, quite fast actually. So for the writing, um, you could use um, a calligraphic pens, uh, nibs, whatever you have. I'm going to keep it simple because it's all about simplicity, right? I'm using same thin brush and taking a lot of golden pigment. So I'm going to write uh, the word joy, but of course you could write whatever you want. If you don't know exactly the styling, I suggest to type it in Google, this particular word, and you could add uh, course, cursive or calligraphy, whatever seems right to you. Okay, I chose word J because it's just really short, but it also has this beautiful kind of a pointy um, moments, which are making this word very interesting uh, visually. So again, my same suggestion, keep it simple, but it's going to look quite complex, especially um, in a combination with our beautiful ornaments that we've created on the top of the word. 
and then if you like you could also add these blobs exactly in the same manner as I did before and here is another beautiful tip for you adding some nicely diluted with water purple tone while the letters are still wet and you see how it spreads nicely it adds another beautiful kind of a uh, tint hint and uh, not just solid gold well 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 the joy is all over my painting i waited uh, for everything to dry and now i'm showing you my beautiful very festive results what do you think so we still have this pencil you could gently erase it with eraser make sure you have a nice one I'm using very uh, mediocre one um, on the other tip of my pencil so very important to make sure that everything is really dried because you don't want to smash your beauty right just make it very very gently Well, it's not a disaster if in some areas you still have the pencil and it's not uh, getting off. Then use clean big brush and take off all the uh, leftovers of the eraser. Now, if you're not too tired of me yet, let me show you one more technique. Now, if you don't have this material, it's fine, okay? Uh, just watch and then you will know what to expect. So this is a gold relief outliner. It's really cool and it's three-dimensional. Three see? I hope you can see it. Yeah, it's better angle. Yeah, it is three-dimensional and when it dries it becomes like a solid, beautiful, uh, pointy dot or a nice um, uh, three-dimensional line. So I'm going to add this 3D in some areas on my berries and in the central part of the flowers because if if you remember the uh, what it's called the poinsettia, poinsettia, right? It has this beautiful tiny kind of a golden uh, kind of a tiny flowers in the in the center. So it's hard to see. I hope you can you can see it um, yeah this way is better so it's a very subtle effect but it's really cool because it adds another dimension and because you know now these flowers uh, look more like the poinsettia okay so if you have this product don't overdo it just a few touches will be fine because we have such a busy artwork already now all the materials that I'm using in this uh, exercise are going to be listed underneath and uh, with the links to the Amazon store. And also, is please, 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 take a look at my uh, Sacred Lotus course where I work with these particular outliners in depth and I talk about them and I offer really beautiful designs, okay? And of course, spread the word about this class. And I really hope that you enjoyed it a lot because I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's kind of simple, basic, but it's beautiful. And it looks very complex, actually. I really like how it turned out. Oh, forgot the dot above the J. So please spread the word about me, about my Abyssima school. Please check out my other free classes on YouTube and in my school, abyssimoartschool.com. All the links are beneath the video. And I'm wishing you happy holidays. And if you watch this video, not in holiday season, you could still create it or you could use different designs. It's up to you. So again, it was Maria Grossbaum from Abyssima Mixed Media School. I wish you a um, really happy creating process and I hope to see you again.